has specifically chosen you to be here at this time and in this place. You have incredible potential, purpose, and calling to push back the darkness and be a light for Christ. Stand for nothing and you'll fall for anything. It's time to stand your ground. This is Unapologetic. Welcome to Unapologetic. I'm so excited because today we have best-selling author Wendy Speak in the studio today, and we are talking about the not-so-common topic of fasting. So before you're like, no, I don't want to do that, I want you to listen to this conversation because we share, Wendy shares, just how much freedom comes whenever we give up the things for a period of time that maybe are just a habit in our life or something that maybe we need to take a break from. And so you will find so much joy in this conversation. You will find so much freedom in this conversation. And if you don't know what fasting is, thanks for tuning in. We are going to explain it to you. And it does not just mean that you don't get to eat donuts anymore on Saturdays. There is so much more to it. So thanks for tuning in. All right, Wendy, I'm so excited you're here. Me too. I've looked forward to this. And you know, I've moved to your neighborhood. So yes. I'm really excited to sit with you because I'm looking for friends too. Oh, I am always looking <laughs> for friends. That's great. And then do you, does that mean like one-on-one -on -one accountability when I do one of your fasts? Oh, like, yeah. Like, can you not come yeah. over and be like, how you doing? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm so excited that you're here. And you recently moved from California. Yep. And you're now in Texas. So just a little different. I've heard things are a little different here. Yeah, there, <laughs> things are a lot a bit different yeah, here. But I'm it. married to Texan, so and oh, I've lived okay. here before, so it's not too big a transition. So you're used to y'all. Yeah, y'all isn't yeah. too much to get used to. No, I'm doing fine. <laughs> I always said I'm from the south, but okay. I belong just a little further south. I'm from Southern California, okay. but this is a whole different kind of south. Yeah, it's a little different. A little different. Okay, so we're gonna start off asking what I ask all of our guests, and with you. I do two questions. I either do, what do you wish Christians would stop apologizing for? Or what do you wish Christians knew about relationships? And so I want you to answer either of those. Which okay. one speaks more? I think I'll answer the first one. Okay. What do we need to stop apologizing for? Because I just had this, oh, it's been, it's been on my heart actually a lot lately, mm -hmm. which is sin. Yeah. We need to stop apologizing for calling out sin. I really believe that right now, maybe for the first time ever, but at least for the first time in my lifetime, I think there's only one sin that remains, hmm. and that is addressing sin. Wow. Um, but we know the closer we get to the end times, they're going to start calling evil good yeah. and good evil and mm -hmm. bitter sweet and sweet bitter um, mm -hmm. and light dark and dark mm -hmm. light. And so everything's a little backwards right now. Mm -hmm. But I do know, I see it. I've got three teenage sons right now. Yeah. And, um, and they even push back on us mm -hmm. if we're talking about sin. Well, who are you mm -hmm. to call out sin in somebody else's life? Well, I'm not calling out sin in their life. I'm talking about the reality of sin existing mm -hmm. in the world, in this fallen world. Mm -hmm. And they say, but that's unloving. Hmm. I say, oh, no, 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 no. Hmm. <laughs> there is nothing more loving than addressing sin because without sin, we have no need for a savior. Right. So if we all of a sudden start, you know, wiping or, or you know, sweeping sin under the rug, mm -hmm. then nobody is going to come face to face with the reality that they need saving. Right. So it is actually loving to say, hey, you know this, this thing you do, mm -hmm. this thought, this ideology you believe, mm -hmm. it's separating you from God. Yeah. But he doesn't want that separation. Mm -hmm. So that's why he sent Jesus to chase you down in yeah. your sin and in your separation and bring you back into a right mm -hmm. restored relationship with Christ. Yes. So yeah. We can, we can make a whole 30 right. minutes about that one right there. I know. That introduction question, I was like, well, I guess we could just talk about that instead. Yeah. But, you know, I'm so glad you said that because you asked me where did unapologetic come from. That's where it came from. Yeah. Working with teenagers for over a decade and <laughs> saying things in conferences that weren't radical at all, um, in my opinion, just biblical. And just right. seeing, I mean, culture is just scaring Christians, scaring well, them out of sharing Let's also acknowledge truth. Yeah. that biblical is radical. Right. In our right. culture today. Absolutely. Now, it is the way it was all intended, mm -hmm. um, but it is radical right. and it is scandalous yes. to be 
a Bible believing, mm-hmm. Bible reading, and Bible formed yeah. Christian, right. transformed Christian. You know, mm-hmm. we're told in uh, Romans 12, I believe, that you're either going to be conformed to this yeah. world or be transformed by the world. And if mm-hmm. we are not in the word, mm-hmm. knowing what God's word says yeah. about sin, then we will just shape. Right. We'll be, you know, shapeshifters yeah. and we will start just looking like the culture around mm-hmm. us. And that pull of the cultural tide, mm-hmm. man, that is a strong pull right now. Like right. I said, I have three teenagers, yeah. so I see it. Mm-hmm. Um, I see how easily it mm-hmm. is to get swept off course. Okay, so we're going to have to have you back to talk about that topic for sure. That's a, that's a whole conversation. I know one that's so, near and dear to yes, your heart. Yes, absolutely care so much about teenagers and young adults. Uh, but I think that that is a transition for what we're talking about because mm. in my own life, whenever I have noticed not like a huge turn towards sin or anything, but when I need to get back on track or maybe I've just been watching a little too much TV or something right. that God brings up the idea in my life of a fast. And that is one of the quickest ways fasting and witnessing for me that I get back on track of remembering, putting things in the right order, go share my faith and change some habit where I'm focusing on God and not fill in the blank like yeah. donuts or whatever such a good such a good setup for this <laughs> yeah, conversation so julia let's just tell everyone why fasting why has this been your ministry this right. the theme of your books i know and not not the ministry i set out to have for myself i mean who yeah. wants to be the person that has the the call to action let's do a 40 day sugar fast yeah. <laughs> and yet it just hits this this felt need because i think that so many of us know I'm turning to something mm-hmm. to get me through my day right? or get me through the night or get me through three o'clock or get me through my kid's nap time or just get me through. Mm-hmm. And we know as Christians that Christ is the only one that gets us through. Right. However, we turn to our phones and we turn to our pantries. We turn into the Starbucks drive through We turn into sweet tea at Chick- Chick-fil-A. You know, mm-hmm. some people that are listening are like, no, don't, don't, Just don't, don't, name. don't go there. <laughs> don't name my thing. Right, that's Jesus chicken right there. Don't touch that. But we turn to something yeah. regularly, mm-hmm. daily, multiple times each day to get us through our days. Mm-hmm. And yet the invitation from Christ is so clear. He said, you come to me. Hmm. You come to me when you're weary and heavy laden. I'm going to give you peace. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you strength. I'm going to give you what you need to get through this life and Mm -hmm. on. You're going to take another step beyond this life into eternal life. I'm Mm -hmm. the only thing that can get you through this life and into forever life Mm -hmm. with me. And yet, and yet we turn to other things. Right. So um, how did it start? how did it start? Um, I'd like to say that I was super spiritual and super smart and I had this wonderful vision, but really I was just ministering to a group of moms Mm -hmm. in a Facebook group, Mm -hmm. specifically moms struggling with anger. Mm -hmm. And my first book is actually called Triggers, Mm -hmm. Exchanging Parents' Angry Reactions for Gentle Biblical Responses. Okay, so third episode with uh, Wendy will be that one. Third episode. Okay. Um, (laughs) And that was the conversation is just what do we do in our triggered moments with our kids? Mm. And totally not planned, just really off the cuff, I said, hey, y'all, what would we, what would, what would happen if we laid down sugar for 40 days? Now, mm-hmm. I was talking physiologically. Mm-hmm. Would we be calmer? Mm-hmm. Would we be kinder? Yeah. Would we be more consistent? All the things we're supposed to be right. with our kids. Maybe we would even be more Christ-like. Mm. Um, so let's just try this and really just... I'm confessing to you right now, it was a physical detox that I was suggesting. I called it a 40-day sugar fast, and we started it. But, man, it was that first week Mm -hmm. that I was aware, this is not a detox. Mm -hmm. This is a fast. This is not a physical Mm -hmm. detox. This is a spiritual fast Mm -hmm. because instead of turning from sugar high to sugar high, we're turning to the most high, and he doesn't want to just change our habits. Mm -hmm. He wants to change our lives. Right. And so that's how it started. And year after year, mm-hmm. people started reaching out. Can we do it again? Can we do yeah. it again? And every year I would, I would write out 40 devotions mm-hmm. and we'd get together in our 40 day sugar fast Facebook group. Oh my goodness. And, um, and then it was like 15, 20,000 mm-hmm. people each year. Mm-hmm. So we put it together as a book okay. and away we go. Every January I host this fast, but yeah. during the fast, as we started to, um, 
turn to the most high rather than the sugar mm -hmm. high, we realized there were other things we were turning to. Mm -hmm. And in mass, everyone said, nope, it's my phone. I mean, I know I needed yeah. the sugar yeah. fast, but social media is a whole different kind of sugar. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we started doing, right after our sugar fast uh -huh. every year, a social media fast. And then I followed it up with the 40-day social media fast book. So I didn't set out to be the fasting person. Right. I have learned a lot about mm -hmm. fasting. I've learned a lot about why mm -hmm. we fast. Right. And I know, I know that's going to be one of your questions, yeah. Wendy. So let me just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you want to well, say it? So I want to say, I want to say when you came into my life. So okay. there has been something that I've always wanted to fast from. And I've never done it. I've never been able to do it. And it was something that no one, like when I bring it up, people think I'm crazy. Yeah. Like they're like, well, that's not bad. And I'll just say, it's caffeine. I so, love that. I love that. that like, but that's not, not bad. It's not, and I'm like, well, it hurts my spirit. Like mm -hmm. it's something I personally feel convicted about because I have trouble sleeping. Yeah. I have a propensity towards anxiety. Yeah. And as long as there's no, I don't, sugar doesn't do anything for me, but caffeine, as long as I don't have caffeine, I'm as calm as can be. I can sleep. I'm so much more present. Yes. And so even though that's not like a quote unquote bad thing, that is something that I have always dreamt of living free from. And it doesn't make sense to anyone else. It, it so, doesn't make sense to anyone no, else. It people makes think so I'm much. crazy. And like, like not Do you crazy, have this one, but yeah, the 40 yeah. day social media um, I have that thing. But, but people are just like. Yeah, there's a chapter on, on coffee. Oh, great, great. On caffeine. So, and, and then they're like, well, so are you having like 12 cups of coffee? No, mm -hmm. I have one. But mm -hmm. I don't want to have any. I want to rely on Christ. And I don't want there to be any anything I'm connecting to other than God. But yeah. the reason I'm saying that is because. This was the year. This is the year. And I have a whole year mapped out of different fasts I'm doing. And oh, I had never met you. I had never talked to you. I had, I was feeling very alone in that this was what I was doing this year. Setting up. I have 40. I have different 40-day fasts I'm doing all year. And I'm not going to talk about it until they're over, of course. But... I was feeling very alone in this because anytime I kind of reach out for help, like, or support, most people don't know what I'm talking about. They're like, I just don't, I don't understand why you do that to yourself. <laughs> and yeah. whenever I was feeling alone, but feeling like God wanted me to do this, you messaged me and so I just cool. couldn't believe it. And so it was all these little ways that God encouraged me and you were a main uh, way that God encouraged me. And so I just think it's really cool how, um, God just encourages people in their fast, and it's not that there's some, like, I don't have, like, some horrible 12 cup of coffee a day pro problem or anything, but I just really have always felt impressed. I don't want to rely on anything That's but it. God. That's the heart. And But it's very hard. Like, yeah. I have, I mean, this is, like, a very authentic episode, but, like, I've started that before. I've stopped it, started and stopped it, mm -hmm. and God keeps giving me the idea of Noah, like Noah built an ark without it ever raining. And like if you yes. look around, everyone just has like Jesus coffee and dog t shirts on. I mean it's right. it's like un like people don't live without no, caffeine. Jesus. People don't live without <laughs> sugar. People a lot of people don't live without alcohol. So um I just want you to kind of you know, I just shared that and I shared for me it's not that caffeine's bad, it's just that I'm so much more peaceful and I can feel God. I can sense God better without it um but I failed I love, a lot of times I love what you yeah. said about but it's not bad mm -hmm. and I'll oftentimes have yeah. people say but Wendy is is sugar bad Wendy is social media bad right Wendy is caffeine or alcohol mm -hmm. or shopping mm -hmm. or binging Netflix I mean yeah. is Netflix bad some and of those um, shows are real bad yeah, some of those so, shows yes, are really maybe, bad. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't one. be watching them. Um, and the information yeah. from yeah. sugar, maybe that's uh -huh. bad too. But really the idea <laughs> right. of it right. is, is, it's ba is it bad? Mm -hmm. And the prophet Isaiah tells us the story of a man who chops down a tree mm -hmm. and he takes some of that wood and he makes a fire and he warms himself by the fire. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know what, wood? You're really good at being wood. You're really mm -hmm. good at making a fire so that I can be warm. Yes. You're good at that. Mm -hmm. And then he takes some of that fire and he takes his food and he warms his food over the fire. He cooks his food. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, wood's really good at making a fire so we can cook our food. Mm -hmm. And then he takes the rest of that wood and he starts carving for himself an idol to worship. Huh. And I would say, you know what? Interesting. Really bad. That's really bad. Yeah. Wood, you're not good at being God. Hmm. And that's how I feel about food 
or alcohol yeah. or social media or coffee is it's really good at being what it's good at being, <laughs> but it's really bad at being God. Right. And so I think that your conviction, I don't want to rely on social media to make me feel good about myself mm -hmm. and how many people liked what I had to say yesterday. I don't, I don't want it. I don't want that. That's a good conviction. Yep. That's not where our affirmation comes from. It comes from the Lord. Yeah. So let's camp out there for 40 days, you know? Right. Well, I don't want to be dependent on that, on that sweet tea in the mm -hmm. afternoon and the handful of chocolate chips mm -hmm. once the kids are down for naps. And then I've got to have a bowl of ice cream because I need an add a girl mm -hmm. at the end of my day when the mm -hmm. kids are down for the night. Mm -hmm. And I need to go out with my husband and have dessert because it's the only way we know how to connect. Well, you know what? That You really are relying a lot on sugar, right, yeah. to get you through not just a week, but mm -hmm. every single day mm -hmm. and multiple times throughout the day. Hmm. God's supposed to get you through. Hmm. So when you were sharing about not wanting to depend on other things yeah. or turning to your coffee first, mm -hmm. you know, we're told in Matthew 5, Seek first the kingdom of yeah. God and his righteousness mm -hmm. and all these other things. Mm -hmm. They can fall into their rightful place. Mm -hmm. But if you're turning to them first and foremost, mm -hmm. they have first place and preeminence in your life, then God's going to fall out of his right place. Mm -hmm. And so I, I say, let's fast in order to feast on him. Wow. Let's fast from these other things that we are turning mm -hmm. to in order to remember to turn to him first. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we feel really bad about that. Right. And that's okay because we're told in, in the, in the prophet's book of Joel, we're told return to me mm -hmm. with weeping and fasting and mourning. Right. So if you feel bad mm -hmm. when you're doing this fast, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Don't run away from that. You mm -hmm. should feel bad. That's, that's conviction. So mm -hmm. now it leads, it leads to repentance, a turning mm -hmm. around toward Christ rather than turning towards your pantry and turning towards your phone, mm -hmm. turning towards your Keurig, you yeah. know? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so let's just kind of break it down. What does it mean to fast? Like, what is that? If people are like, they keep well, using in the this context, word and I can't, <laughs> I yeah. need to Google it real quick. I mean, that's a churchy word, fasting. And yeah. I do want you in a second to talk about, because detoxes are so popular. So like, Very. what's the difference in a fast and a detox? But let's just talk about what's fasting when we're, yes. you and I are throwing it around right now. I like to consider it, I'm going to set down something temporary and ordinary so that I can turn to the one who is eternal and extraordinary. Wow. Because I'm turning to these things as though they hold power in my life. They're just temporal. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're not going to last forever. Mm -hmm. They, you know, give me a little bit of a dopamine release, mm -hmm. a little bit of a caffeine, mm -hmm. you know, boost. Mm -hmm. But they're not going to get me through this life or yeah. life eternal. Yeah. So I'm going to set down the things that I am turning to mm -hmm. so that I can turn to God. Yeah. I'm going to stop running from the sugar high. I'm going to turn to the most high. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop turning to social media so that mm -hmm. I can get social with the Lord. I'm going to go dark there mm -hmm. so I can turn to the light of the world right. because he's not just going to transform the way I mm -hmm. drink coffee. Mm -hmm. He's going to transform me as mm -hmm. I spend time with him. Absolutely. And so we, I want to talk about that a little bit. You and I talked offline about this. Um, for part, a huge part of my story is I had an eating disorder for many years. And so I'm hesitant, or not hesitant. Well, for a long time, I was hesitant. To I talk would be about hesitant. Fasting. Yeah. Well, to talk about with other people because now knowing how many people struggle with it. So yes. personally, God has never called me to fast from food. Yep. And that's fine with me. And I don't. I'm pretty sure that's what he's told me, but that's not, there would not be anything really spiritual about me taking a food fast because of my Your like personal, you know, history with that. And I've encouraged other people that too, you know, there are other things that you can fast from. Um, but I think a lot of times we've only heard it in the sense of food, you need fast from food. And we think about Jesus fasting and from food. And so where did you, I guess, just find the freedom for that to mean other things like sugar and social media? Mm -hmm. Like, where can we find that? Yeah. First biblically? of all, I just want to <laughs> affirm we wouldn't we wouldn't invite a bunch of alcoholics to go have a Bible study in a bar. Right. So, a fast is restricting mm -hmm. food consumption. Mm -hmm. So. If you've had disordered eating patterns mm -hmm. in your life, that usually includes restrictive right. diets. So I do not encourage fasting mm -hmm. for people who have struggled with that yeah. themselves. So I just I just yeah. affirm that. Um, 
Oh, goodness. And then you asked me what? I just wanted to circle back yeah. there because I think that's really yeah, important. Yeah, no, it is. It is important. But I guess for me, I always took that spiritual discipline as, oh, well, that's just one I don't do. because right. and. God's, but then you had asked right. me. So how, where do we find in scripture or where do we find the freedom for fasting to not just mean food? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, during the first or second or third, in those early days of doing the sugar fast mm -hmm. online and leading other groups through it, um, I... I realized that it resonated with a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but I suggested, is it possible that sugar was just a doorway mm -hmm. through which, which we invited Christ to come on into our lives, into the really private places of our lives? Mm -hmm. And he came in, <laughs> he took a look around, and he said, all right, thanks for the sugar, but I want it all. Wow. Because he never, he never... Never in his word does he say, I want a, I want a sugar sacrifice. Mm -hmm. He says, I want a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So what is it yeah. that we're living for? Or what is it that we're turning to mm -hmm. with such regularity that we're not living for him? Mm -hmm. um, why, why, are we, why are we so comfortable saying, oh, yeah, I, I really want to spend time in God's word, or I really want to boost up my prayer life. I'm just so busy. Mm -hmm. And yet at the end of the day, we can look at our phone. It says, you've been on your phone to right. some degree for four and a half yeah. hours, mm -hmm. seven and a half hours, mm -hmm. you know? Right. You got your music streaming, you've got GPS going, mm -hmm. you're texting, you're mm -hmm. constantly opening different apps, mm -hmm. but we're too busy. Mm -hmm. So what I realized is let's pinpoint what it is we're consuming. Okay whether it's food mm -hmm. or it's social media mm -hmm. or it's retail therapy mm -hmm. or it's alcohol or it's caffeine mm -hmm. to get us through our days. Yeah. And then let's get hungry for him. Yeah. And what I found is if I lay something down that I really have been turning to habitually, mm -hmm. it's an invitation to make a new habit. Yeah. Because right. I'm going to be hungry yes. for the thing. I'm hungry mm -hmm. for connection on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry for getting that, that, dopamine release mm -hmm. in whatever way that means, you know, yes. a, a mocha frappuccino. Um, so I'm going to experience hunger. I had, I had heard a quote once that said, let those hunger pangs work like church bells calling you to prayer. My goodness. So we're going to <laughs> fast from that thing yeah. we're, hu we're hungry mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. so that we experience a hunger mm -hmm. that we purposely say, no, Lord, that's the hunger I want mm -hmm. for you. Hmm. So let me experience hunger and then let me say, but that's what I want for you. Because mm -hmm. we say we love God mm -hmm. most, right. but we turn to our phones more. Mm -hmm. We say we love God most, but we turn to our pantry with more regularity. Yeah. I think about it just even like as a therapist, like we talk about that people come in and they say, I don't know, like I'm depressed or I'm anxious, but I don't know why. And so one of the things it's not, I mean, all truth is God's truth, of course, but it's not necessarily even a spiritual idea. It's we say, okay, what are you using not to feel? Hmm. And phone, alcohol, caffeine, self whatever. Self numbing. Yeah, what are you using where you don't have to feel? Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting. Anytime I've done a fast, I just immediately start feeling. And we don't like to feel. That's and good. so during the pandemic especially, um, I was I was doing a fast and I mean I almost instantly felt so lonely. Yes. And there was just like this loneliness and I was like, well what did what do I know as a therapist? Like, emotions aren't bad. Like, they show you what needs to happen. So if I was feeling lonely, that signaled the need to connect. And so I needed to connect with God. I needed to connect right. with real people. And so I think just realizing whatever it is in our life that's distraction and distracts us, distracts us from feeling, in the end, I, I'm sure you would say the same thing, is going to lead to actually getting the need met and actually yes. getting fulfilled instead of more of a band-aid. And thinking, how, how kind of God. Yeah, right. right. He, he says, right. I made food for your pleasure, but I didn't make food to be God. Hmm. So that's wonderful yeah. that you're turning back to me. It's wonderful mm -hmm. that you're sad that you'd been turning to the wrong things. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful that you want to turn to the right thing now. Right. I'm the right thing. Right. Let's 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 give you the, this 40-day right. season to get hungry, to fast so that you can feast on me. Mm -hmm. I want to start with this verse just so we can kind of keep going a little bit in 
to how to know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about First Corinthians 6, and I looked it up before we talked, but it's, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. And I think I that, that you know, growing up the way I did, people were kind of in two camps. Either it's legalism or it's it's all or nothing. Permissive. Yeah. So it's yeah. like you can do anything. Like people think this is in the Bible. You can do anything in moderation. Yeah. Um, it, that's that's right, uh, I'm like not, I don't my know verse, verse. <laughs> two, two. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and the truth is that one out of eight people are alcoholics right. and that a lot of these substances destroy lives, destroy families. So how yeah. how does someone know if God's calling them to fast from something? Oh, such a good question. Um, during the sugar fast, I always one day address alcohol. Mm -hmm. And everyone pushes back on it. And I say, listen, if this is causing, if you're, if the idea of setting down your wine is causing you to whine, you probably stumbled over a stumbling block. Wow. If the idea of setting down your phone mm -hmm. causes you to whine, mm -hmm. you're probably stumbling over a stumbling block. Mm -hmm. um, and I heard that an idol typically can be, you can find it in your life if at the thought of it being taken away, your life, it's like, it could fall apart. It's mm -hmm. like, no, anything but that, right? Yeah. So I would, I come back to something I already said, which is, what are you turning to mm -hmm. with regularity, mm -hmm. habitually, mm -hmm. to get you through your life? Okay. Because if it's not Christ, mm -hmm. it's the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I, I have a, a woman that was telling me that she knew she needed to do the sugar fast mm -hmm. when she realized she was keeping her sugar in the same place she used to keep her alcohol. She was a recovered alcoholic, mm -hmm. but she started hiding the, the um, what are they, Girl Scout cookies mm -hmm. in the pantry, not the pantry, but the cupboard above the fridge. Mm -hmm. So yeah. she said, that was my go-to place mm -hmm. for keeping my alcohol, my mm -hmm. bottles of wine mm -hmm. and vodka. Mm -hmm. And I said, I love the location that you hid them in. Right. Because you were reaching up. You just needed to reach higher. Wow. I know. That's good, huh? Yes. And that's that's what so many of us are doing. We're reaching. Okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. You know it's not in yourself mm -hmm. to cope with life. Mm -hmm. So it's good. Let's just recognize yeah. you're reaching. Good job, you. Mm -hmm. Now you've got to reach a little higher. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say, like, I don't know if you talk about this much, but sometimes one reason is people really are self-medicating with depression and anxiety. Yes. And sometimes we really need to address those issues. And there is a chemical issue going on. Yeah. And because caffeine and alcohol and sugar are so readily available, it's easier to use that yes. than actually still, like, address a real issue. Yeah. So there really is a chemical change that goes on. And that's why people I have do a loved it, one who just got out of rehab. Okay. And um, this person, since coming out of rehab, has gained probably about 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. Now, the, fasting is not about the weight. Mm -hmm. I don't talk about weight when we're doing our 40-day fast. Yeah. I'm bringing this up to say that they have switched mm -hmm. from one yeah. substance abuse mm -hmm. to another substance abuse. Right. And what I've said to this friend is, God wants us to be dependent on him. Mm -hmm. And we call this substance dependency. Mm -hmm. So let's lay down whatever substance mm -hmm. we're turning to, yeah. to cope with life, to medicate our pain. Now, this friend is also in therapy mm -hmm. and um, has had medical tests run mm -hmm. and is now on some, some uh, medication to mm -hmm. help with a chemical imbalance. Mm -hmm. So they're getting support right. in other ways, too. But they noticed and I noticed, yeah. oh, you're just swinging. Switch addictions, for sure. Yeah, the addiction from common. one thing to the next. I was thinking about, because I told you, I've mapped a year out of different fasts I'm doing. And just, it's good to know how you're wired. And yes. I knew Start there. if everything was just taken away, like I'm doing like, I am not even say until it's been successful, but I have different things. And some of the months are more taking things away, yeah. but I felt like it was very important to add and so, I that. because I remember learning just about some of the early church fathers and they were real big on, I don't even know the official term, but basically depriving themselves. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, I've given up everything so I can be godly and they were hungry and they didn't have any clothes and, you know, just I, there even is the really severe form right. where they would 
hit themselves. And I mean, it's really, it's crazy. But people, I mean, a lot of people have really almost gone the other extreme of just depriving themselves of everything. And so adding behaviors, I know in therapy we talk about replacement behaviors. Yes. Can't just take away. We need to add I'm sure that most of this is covered in your material, but do you just have like some quick ways of how to start a fast, which of course we should read your book, but how you can start it, but then some of those replacement behaviors, yeah. like, and then how do you make sure you're not just going to switch addictions? Sure, or sure, switch, and really holding it, addiction, holding yeah. it before the Lord. Right. So I don't give a how to or how not to. Okay. I don't give a what to eat, what not to eat. Okay. What I say is you pinpoint with the Lord. Mm-hmm. I mean, the topic the 40 day sugar fast mm-hmm. is just a hook. Okay. Because all of us know, okay, there's something it's that I turn title. to, right? <laughs> yes. And so it just hooks us in. Okay. And then from day one, I say, or actually before day one, just in the introduction, now you take the details to the Lord. Okay. Now we might even do this corporately. Reach out to your sisters mm-hmm. and your, your mm-hmm. pew friends at church and your yeah. Bible study group or your mops group mm-hmm. and invite them to do it with you. You yeah. are going to be astounded that the majority of people you invite are going to say, okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really, it, it blows my mind. Mm-hmm. It's because we all have a sense that we're yeah, turning to sweet things, <laughs> yes. right, to get us through our days. Uh-huh. Um, but I say this isn't a diet, mm-hmm. but we can learn something from a diet. Mm-hmm. Back to your question. When we're dieting, we know I'm going to take out the unhealthy, mm-hmm. but I'm going to crowd out those unhealthy things mm-hmm. by eating lean proteins, mm-hmm. leafy green vegetables, right. some colorful fruits. Oh my so gosh, we I'm actually so hungry while we're talking about I know. This. <laughs> <laughs> we crowd out the wrong things uh-huh. by replacing them with the right things. Right. So remember what I already said, we're fasting so that we can feast. Hmm. And so you could say, okay, I'm going to I'm going to set this down and then I'm going to open my Bible. No, mm-hmm. well, let's crowd it out. Mm-hmm. Yes, set them down, but Make it so that you're you're full. Yeah. And isn't it crazy how much time you have? It like, is. It's crazy. Well, especially with the social so, like, media yes. fast. So yeah. whenever um, – so I, I – can't see on social media so that's not when like I try to fast from that all the time because I'm uh, I'm like the last generation you prefer to not I be on there be. anyway that's the last generation I'm in the last generation that remembers like life before technology like we still had phones like home lines and everything so I love not being on it but the other fast I've done because in case you're like oh no I, by the way everyone listening probably knows right now something they should give up Oh, for sure. Something that they should give up for a certain amount of time. And then the great thing is it's enough time to break the habit, and then you get to decide, are you inviting that thing back in? Yes. And, you know, sometimes you will, and sometimes you'll be like, that was the hardest thing I've ever done, so I'm never bringing that back again. Right. That's been my experience. Um, But there's so much time. Like, there was so much time the different times I've done fast. I was like, oh, (laughs) I could go work out. I could go read my Bible. I could go have a family devotion with my kids. And so I think just realizing, I think Satan lies to us and is like, oh man, like now your life's going to be boring. And I mean, he's been doing that since with Eve. The beginning. The beginning. Like you're missing out. Right. If you don't drink, you're missing out. If this you don't. wasn't actually right. what God told you to do. Right. Like God didn't really tell God you really to do the 40 day this. sugar fast. That's, <laughs> even just the, if you're super theological, like, right. well, isn't that legalism? Don't you know there's grace? And I mean, I've seen like a theological argument against all sure. this kind of sure. stuff. And so I, I just want to say as a fun loving person, anytime for our listeners that I've given anything up, there's so much more time to do the things that matter. And it's right. so much more fulfilling. But it's very difficult to get started, mm-hmm. even just because of Christians that will give you bad advice or because of lies that Satan will tell you. So can you just walk us through, I mean, I've, sh- I've shared with you very candidly, There, I mean, I've known for years things I should stop or start and it's really right. you know usually centered around that caffeine but the thing has been because the world does not give up caffeine right and so I'll know God wants me to do it I'll know this is the right thing and I'm sure our listeners they know they know what they're supposed to give up or at least for a period of time yes. how do you get started how do you combat those lies or just rhythms first of all I just want to acknowledge that what you already said those of you listening right now if you have a sense of what it is you turn to, and now I, I'm talking about it can be pornography, mm-hmm. it can be alcohol, it can be smoking, then you've done that for 35 years in your life yeah. already, um, but it can also be that one cup of coffee that you just, you want to want Christ yeah. with the same, uh, you know, 
excitement <laughs> in the morning yeah. that you yeah. want yeah. that that cup of coffee. Yeah. And so for a season, you want to set it down mm-hmm. so that you can experience that that turning mm-hmm. to Christ mm-hmm. in your hunger. Yeah. Um, so if you're whatever it is you're experiencing yeah. right now, um, I would just say, take it to the Lord. Mm in prayer Mm -hmm. and say, God, I'm willing to set this down for 40 days so I can be with you. Now, if you'd like to um, get the 40 day sugar fast or Mm -hmm. the 40 day social media fast Mm -hmm. or the 40 day fast journal, you can find those online. But really this is about taking the things you are turning to Mm -hmm. and laying them down and then turning, right? Repenting Mm -hmm. is doing a turnaround, Mm -hmm. turning around and saying, instead of turning towards those things, I'm gonna turn to you, God. Mm -hmm. Um, give me, give me a friend to hold me yeah. accountable and check in with me. Mm-hmm. But really more than anything, I want you to be my friend, God. I just want to grow yeah. my relationship with you. Mm-hmm. I want to grow my hunger for your word. Um, and everybody's fast is different. So there's not going to be a step by step. Um, even if you do go through these books, they're written as a daily devotional. Right. So they're, and, and I love this. I don't know if you made it to the end of it. Yeah. Um, it's called the 40 day sugar fast and the 40 day social media fast, but there are actually 41 chapters Mm -hmm. because I want you to come back and say, even though the fast is through the feast never ends. Right. Even though I might choose to hop back on Instagram, Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that in lieu of turning to you. You are the one I want to turn to God. I don't want to turn to those I like Mm -hmm. and leave the one I love behind. Mm -hmm. Man. So it's really personal. Right. It's really personal. Yes. So, but if you know if in your deep, deep person mm-hmm. what it is you're turning to, mm-hmm. I just encourage you yeah. to lay it down. Mm. And if you're scared, I would also just say because having more mm. working on the therapist side of helping people break habits, doing it for a day. And instead of saying, oh, no, I'm going to have to give up my favorite thing forever, there's something I think very freeing about there being a beginning and end Mm -hmm. to the way that you approach um, fast, which is in the Bible, of course. But realizing, like, it doesn't even have to be forever. Like, just saying for this amount of time. Because we can do anything for 40 days. I believe so. I believe so. And um, that does help people, especially if there really is some kind of – I do want to say here, like, if – if you're listening and it's more of a actual full-fledged drug or alcohol addiction, go ahead and actually get professional help for that because there's a lot more that goes into that. And you probably, of course, know that that's something that should stop and that you need out of your life. But there's more support that needs to be around you Absolutely. to give up full-fledged addictions as also eating disorders. So that's not what Wendy and I are talking about. We're talking about those habits and those things that we go to. But the chemical addiction and food addiction, please actually seek real help because there really is real professional people that can help you with that. We're just talking about the normal normal habits. And that, remember, this is, a, this is an invitation. Yeah. This right. is not about condemnation. This is right. an invitation yes. for transformation. Right. And we're just inviting the Lord yeah. to take his throne back, basically. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I look mm-hmm. at people holding those phones. I just mm-hmm. want to say, get that phone off his throne, yes. you know, with the regularity that you pick it mm-hmm. up. Oh, that you would yeah. invest just a fraction of that yeah. um, that time mm-hmm. and, and focus. Mm-hmm. You'll love this. Last summer, I was going to get a flip phone. So I was, I mean, I was going to go like old school because I'm yeah. so tired of being all that connectedness all the time. Fake, yeah. fake Well, I think that we're so connected that right. we're disconnected. Right. Like not real connectedness. Yes. Okay. So could talk to you forever. We must yeah. wrap up. How can we know more about your ministry? How can we stay connected to when we speak? Sure. You can find me online when I'm not fasting from social media. <laughs> um, Wendy Speak, both on Facebook okay. and on Instagram. Great. But also, if you know that you'd like to join me for mm-hmm. the next uh, Sugar Fast, mm-hmm. uh, I do them every January. You can Great. go to 40daysugarfast.com mm-hmm. is the number 40. Um, or if you want to find out more about the sh- uh, social media fast, you can go to 40daysocialmediafast.com. Great. Both books are at Hobby Lobby or online at Amazon mm-hmm. and... Um, I just, I just speak a blessing over you. Whatever it is, you know you need to yeah. lay down mm-hmm. so that you can turn with purpose regularly and just get hungry yeah. Yeah. for him. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things. Mm-hmm. They're going to fall into their proper place. Right. 
Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you for so much encouragement, just your wisdom. I appreciate your ministry and all that you do. Thanks for tuning in to Unapologetic. I know that you were blessed by today's episode because there was so much truth, so much scripture, and just it's a great idea. It's a great idea. It's a great truth that we can live in freedom from everything, from anything that is holding us back from our relationship with God. And so I would encourage you to remember that fasting ultimately, like Wendy says, leads to feasting. Also a quick word, if you are listening today and you are struggling with alcoholism or drug addiction, eating disorders, I want to encourage you to seek professional help for those issues, for those addictions. And please remember, your story is not over. That is something that a lot of people struggle with and there is true sobriety. There's true freedom from those issues as well. You are loved, you're seen by God, and we are so excited just to help encourage you, encourage you on your walk with Christ. Remember, you can hear today's episode and more at ptv.org slash Julia and wherever you get your podcasts.